Happy Easter Wednesday to all of you. I, uh, along with you, celebrated the resurrection on Easter Sunday. And uh, even though we couldn't be together, that does not nullify the power of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to the Christian calendar, which traces back to the ancient church, Easter is not only one day, but it's a whole season. It's actually the seven weeks between the time that Jesus rose from the dead and the time of the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The beautiful thing about the resurrection day or Easter or Easter season is all of the themes that are entailed therein. We have the resurrection, we have the theme of life, we have the theme of hope, of liberation, of triumph, and of victory. And that is ours. And we especially need that hope and that triumph and that victory right now that enables us to walk through the time in which we're passing. So I was thinking about the, uh, the book of Ephesians. I think it's very apropos for themes such as resurrection and life and hope and victory and triumph. And so Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, and he actually begins this letter with an excitement. You can almost hear it in his voice. In fact, he gets carried away when he's talking about all the benefits that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he does what my composition teacher would say, is he gets into a, an extended run-on sentence. After he extols all of the blessings and blesses God the Father for what he's given us in Jesus Christ, this is what he says. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints in him, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at, your, at his own right hand in a heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but in the world to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And so what Paul is saying is, I want you to know him. And that's what we're talking about during this time. Uh, everything is slowing down. We're under quarantine. Then let's take this time and really, really become intimate with the Lord through prayer and through his word. And so there's several things. In fact, there's three things that Paul is asking the Lord to do. When he opens the eyes of our heart that we may know what is the hope of his calling, the eternal riches that we have in Jesus Christ. But especially here, I want to look at what Paul is saying. He said, I, I, want that you, I want you to know the exceeding greatness of his power. I mean, he uses an adverb here that is beyond even comprehending. He said, I want you to know the hooper balo. I want you to know that which is beyond before beyond even your imagination, that kind of power, I want you to know it in your life. When he uses the word know, he's not talking about know about. He's talking about experiencing it 
having experiential knowledge of the kind of power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, that we can know that in our lives. That's what gives us the ability to walk through this time. We experience all kinds of emotions during this quarantine, all of us do. And so what we have to do is to override those emotions with faith and with the ability that the Holy Spirit gives us. And so in the resurrection, but not just in the resurrection, but also in the ascension and the exaltation of Jesus to the right hand of God the Father, we have this kind of power that is working in us. And when Paul wants to describe this kind of power, we can't see it in the English, but in the Greek, he, he builds one synonym upon another. He uses four different words for power. He talks about the kind of power that raised Jesus from the dead, that it is inherent in God himself, that might that is the attribute of God that comes forth in kratos, that, that is a mighty power going forth, the energia, which is the working of that power, and it comes forth in dunamis, uh, not, not an explosion, but a dynamo. That kind of power that raised Jesus up, that took him in ascension and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And according to the scripture, that's where we are in Jesus Christ. We're seated together, two and six of Ephesians. We're seated together in heavenly places. And I love the verse where it says, He has put all things under his feet, all powers and dominions and principalities and powers, and coronavirus and depression and discouragement. Those things are real, but Jesus is exalted above those things. And so in these days when... It's days of not knowing exactly what is happening. We know how we can walk through it because we have his power, that kind of power that Paul describes. And I tried to describe to you those four different synonyms that we have that kind of power that we can walk in. So I encourage you this week to pray that prayer of the Apostle Paul because it's a spirit-inspired prayer, and God will answer it. And don't forget to join us in the live stream on Sunday morning. God bless you.